When sediment starts to move, uh, it interacts with the flow uh, very nicely. So for example, we talked about how when we have a grain on a bed that gets lifted into the flow with the Bernoulli effect, the flow pushes it downstream. And so the part of the momentum of the flow go goes into the momentum of the grain. And then if it's large enough, it comes back down and sits on the bed again. Okay. So this is for an individual grain. Um, and one of the things that happens is there are irregularities on the, on the bottom of the bed. So that's intentionally a, um, an irregular line. And uh, let's say that we have a grain sitting right here. Right? It takes a little bit extra to lift it up over this because the this high because the flow is defect, deflected a little bit over the high, but maybe a little bit of um, uh, flow from this other side can come in and start to move it. Right, so the um, geometry of the flow can change uh, with the geometry of the surface at the bottom. The other thing is we typically have a whole bunch of grains sitting on the bottom. As geologists, we're interested in natural flows rather than uh, things on, say, clean cement surfaces most of the time. And so these grains also interfere with each other. So what often happens, I'm just going to draw the grains as dots now, right? So, so we have grains saltating and they saltate different distances and what often happens is is if you end you can end up with a little bit of a pile of grains in one place here and when you end up with a pile of grains it starts to de deflect the flow so if we have our flow coming in like this, this pile of the grains deflects it upward and then the flow has some momentum and it often shoots downstream. As it gets closer to the bed again, maybe it sort of digs up uh, into uh, the grains right here. Yeah. So as you can imagine, that when you have this topography, it influences how uh, the grains move um, because it's changing the flow characteristics here. So if we draw, this is our, our pile of grains here. And I'll stop it a little sooner than this. All right, so this, I just sort of magnified this here. What happens is our flow is coming along and in this zone right here our boundary layer is thin and when the boundary layer is thin it's easier for the grain it's to get picked up. All right, so the Bernoulli effect is more effective when you have greater shear at the boundary layer which is when, what happens when it's thin. When the flow reaches the top of the high, it has momentum going downstream like this. And over here, your boundary layer is thick. Right? And when the boundary layer is thick enough, you get a lot less sediment transport. Right? So in this zone here, you get erosion of grains, the effective flow speed is higher, and in this zone here, you tend to have little transport of the grains. Huh? Because that boundary layer is thicker. So if we have a grain here that gets picked up into the flow and it's saltating and it happens to land 
in the zone with a thick boundary layer, it tends to stay there. Okay. So what this is doing is it's connecting the characteristics of the boundary layer to when and how sediment uh, uh, it gets eroded or transported um, uh, along a bed. So thanks for watching.